mix album? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so we mix album. Okay. <laughs> so who's yeah, who's it's, 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 got a, it's, it's, it's 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 a cool thing. I mean, you know, uh, just just uh, to hand out elements of your original songs and, and you know uh, give them around to various people to fuck around with and, and uh, basically see what comes back. It's a cool thing for you know some of the things that you get back. They kind of they kind of sometimes turn out a little bit clubby, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool because. Um, the music that I write isn't necessarily always catering to clubs and shit like that, um, so it's kind of cool to to be able to, you know, kind of um, de deconstruct and, and then reconstruct all the music and, and you know just just uh, present to maybe a different scene. Did you did you give people um, did you give people a, a, an admission or a brief of what you wanted from the remix? Or did you just give them as much freedom as you could? I pretty much gave them. Um, all the freedom that they could ever want. Uh, one or two of the uh, other remixes came back to me with, uh, I, I suppose they're called drafts, uh -huh. work in progress, and uh, you know, like, hey, what do you think? And I would, I would go, okay, well, now that I have the power to interfere, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I said, well, this is great, this is great. Maybe, maybe you could just forget that little part there because it doesn't necessarily fit in. Or hey, well, the remix is eight minutes long. Maybe it shouldn't be that long. Yeah. Um, Did you choose the bands? Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much did. I so mean, it was, it was all me. I mean, it wasn't like any label involved or anything like that. So so I picked them out. And does that reflect your, your choice of music, what you're listening to now, what you're enjoying? I mean, yeah. I mean, I um, I would contact bands that I, that I found interesting in some way. Um, or challenging. We're just playing different, like in the nursery or something like that, which is just so vastly uh, different from from where I, you know, where I come from. Um, that was just... You know, so off the wall that it, it was just a great idea to have someone like in a nursery like this, an example, to read as a song for us. I wanted to ask you a question about about how how your your music has progressed over over your career. And it started off in, in one place, sort of in the black metal um, side of things, and then you did a lot of very interesting soundscape music and very interesting uh, storytelling, and now you're moving back towards the, the band side of things and much more industrial and, and metal and with this remix album which is almost like an EBM and uh, as you say it's almost electronic club music where can you see the Mortis and, and the band going next? I think we're, we've always been pretty open-minded people and uh, I don't think we're going in one particular direction I think it's pretty important to say that the remix album is by no means um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily uh, uh, dictate what we might sound like in the future because obviously it's made, you know, the remixes are pre pretty much made by other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. The musical direction of Mortis right now is, is uh, if anything, it's going in a way more heavy and in, in angry direction than it used to be. Okay. Um, so, while a couple of the songs, in my opinion, that we're working on right now, they're, I guess they're fairly, you know, they have, they have beats and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it, but it's not. It's not really. I would. I wouldn't say it's super club friendly. I mean, yes. Yeah. It's, it's just. It's probably way too hateful. Okay, <laughs> that's, that brings me on to yeah. another question, which um, is kind of looking. If you look at the lyrics and if you look at the song titles uh, throughout the next few albums, it's gone from um, some really quite um, almost naive song titles, very interesting, very um, mythical, mystical, and now it's getting much more direct, much more, as you say, passionate and aggressive. And it's all and it's so very stripped down. I mean, you know, yeah. the, the truth comes out. You know, does this uh, more accurately represent right. how you how you're feeling? Are you yeah, I mean, I've, even back in the days when I was making these, uh, you know, mythical or mystical, as you say, uh, songs or you know, song titles, mm -hmm. um, there was still a lot of uh, anger in my heart. Now that the mask is gone, do you do you feel that that's now you, you kind of put? What do you mean? I put a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about. <laughs> do you feel that a bit of the past is you 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 kind of put it to the past now? And you feel um, yourself. What was the, what yeah, was the I think reason? I think I think uh, we've we've um, completed a, a period of time, and uh, I, I, I feel, feel like or, yeah, well, yeah. No, I've, I've been using that word a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And, uh, it's going to turn into a problem at some point. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think I think we're just uh, it's just a, 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 you know, a question of closure. Mm. You know, we've done it. It's it's time to move on. It artistically it doesn't really do anything for me anymore. I don't feel like it you know represents anything that I can relate to. Other than I understand the fact that it's a it's a thing that a lot of kids probably you know uh, want to see and recognize, but unfortunately you know this is you know it's an ego trip for me. you know I started this fucking thing because I like music, mm -hmm. not because I want to please everybody else except myself. It's still still about me, man. <laughs> or you know all of us, whatever. I mean, maybe they oh, you know they could wear masks. Do, like you, don't wear masks. do you enjoy the the band, the feeling of being in the band and performing as a band more than? You were enjoying, say, creating your music, and you used to play gigs on your own before there was a band. Yeah, that was fun. And how was, was it? How how did, how was the experience different? Well, now it's it's a rock thing now, isn't it? You know, um, it's the whole interaction with other people on stage and everything. It's like a unity thing, and and uh, that's a totally different feeling than you know being on uh, you know on stage on your own. Mm. What are you gonna do? Run around and you know headbutt the walls. You know? <laughs> It's, it's, I've done it, you know, not headbutt the walls, but I mean, I've, I've been on stage on my own, and it's, it's what you call performance art, mm -hmm. and it's just fucking pathetic, it doesn't work, trust me, it doesn't fucking work, not for me, and, you know, I'd rather be on, on stage with a band, and fucking just, you know, get the whole, like, you know, uh, action response yeah. kind of thing, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've noticed this, is, this will be the fourth time or fifth time that I've seen you play with the band. And I've noticed you become more and more confident, more and more comfortable in, in the band situation. And do you feel this is something now that you you really you're in your element, you enjoy it? And you yeah, it feels more natural to me because I mean I, I grew up with with uh, rock and roll music. I mean there's this cliche as it sounds. So it's me and ten thousand billion other people grew up with rock and roll music, and you know it's, it feels very natural. For me to do, as opposed to staying up there with maybe a keyboard, and, which is a direction I could have taken, <clears throat> you know, given you know the, the electronic elements of what we do. Um, but that wouldn't feel real, not to me. I mean, at the end of the day, I grew up with fucking Led Zeppelin and Kiss. Can I ask you a question about the electronic uh, side of things that you're you're doing? Um, you say you brought it on, on the laptop. Uh, who, who is it? One of you that programs it? Do you program it? Is it more a central part of the, the songwriting process? It's the early stages of soccer. You know, that always starts with a Nord lead or a Waldorf or something like that. It's just some noisy fucking synth sound, and which which kind of you know is the um, preliminary you know guitar or something like that. Like G -G -G, some 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 buzzing yeah. stupid sound that obviously you can't keep in the final production. Usually, you yes. okay, Levy, here's the riff, and he says, "I can't play that. It's impossible." <laughs> That happens a lot because you know I, I do like things that I don't think like a guitar player, so we always had to like restructure it. Some you know, not always, but you know, a lot of times. So it's actually transferable to guitars and, and things like that. But I do, I do, I do all the programming. Um, as far as I did, I do all the programming. What did 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 anyone do any programming on the brush? <laughs> Except for me, I think I did all of it. No, you did all the programs. Because I was, that took a I year, that fucking I album. I was out of my mind on that fucking I album. actually think Lego tried once to uh, reprogram one of the basins and you went bananas. Wow. <laughs> that was like really early in the production, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I mean, I'm fucked. Dude, I'm so confused. I mean, I don't even know. But I, I write all the songs as far as I thought I did like 95% of programming then you know some co-producer might come in and do some editing but yeah um, I do I guess I do almost all of it.